Hello YouTube. This morning I got a question on my Instagram account that I wanted to share with you guys because, well for one, I was just gonna reply on Instagram but it would have been like five paragraphs and if I do it in a video, you know, it might run five, eight, ten minutes long but writing it all out would have been a pain in the butt. But also, this is a really common concern question that I get often and so hopefully by putting it out on YouTube here, anybody else who's struggling with the same perspective that this person's struggling with can hopefully get some advice and some guidance through it. Anyways, this person writes, Hi again. I'm still working on my education, but I have an issue that I can't seem to shake off. Have you ever felt afraid of failing, cut the hair wrong, or just making a mistake? I've been at the salon since 2018, and I'm still afraid of making mistakes, even though I know that that's what's going to make me grow. Any idea or maybe a tip on how I might dare to actually screw up and just learn something without feeling like a total failure? The other hairdressers where I work are super nice and supportive, always checking my work and telling me what is good and what needs to be a little different. Still, I'm always scared when they check. This is a lot to talk about. <laughs> so bear with me. You have to understand that a haircut being good enough, there's not a one universal standard for good enough. There's actually three standards. There's good enough that your client likes it, there's good enough that you like it, and there's good enough that other barbers and hairstylists approve of it. Now, if you're feeling unsure about whether your haircuts are good enough, stop and think about those three different standards, those three very different standards. If your clients are complaining, asking for their money back, wanting a recut, okay, your haircuts aren't good enough to be taking clients, but, but, think back to cosmetology school or barbering school when you barely knew anything about hair. Did you, at that point, have anybody get a haircut by you and go, wow, that looks good, thank you, right? Somebody enjoyed their haircut. I think we've all had a happy client, even at the very, very beginning of our career. So even from the get-go, we have the ability to be good enough for a client. It's just consistency, probably, at that point, if, if we are getting some clients who are unhappy. And to be totally honest, to this day, I still have unhappy clients. Like, if I do 500 haircuts, one of them wants a refund. Most of the time, if a client is unhappy with their haircut, it probably has less to do with the actual technical work and more to do with the consultation going wrong and you didn't quite give them exactly what they hoped for. Their expectations were somewhere and what you actually delivered was something different. That's like most cases of a client not being happy with their haircut. But as far as being good enough to make a client happy, I, I like a quote that I heard from Ivan Zoot years ago where he said, how good do you have to be at cutting hair? Good enough. So in, in this particular message, they didn't mention that clients were unhappy. And so I, I'm, I'm led to believe that this person is really focusing more on the other standards. They, they don't feel good enough to themselves. Their own standards are too high. When, when other barbers point out flaws in their work, they're, they're taking it so personally. Oh, I'm not good enough that this other barber can't find flaws in my work. So let's talk about the personal standards here. Now, I want to say your own personal standards are really also influenced by the other two standards. Even if your clients are happy, but other barbers can find flaws in your work, that might make you feel like, oh, well, I guess I'm not good enough. Even if your clients are happy and other barbers think that you do great work, it's still very, very possible to feel like you're not good enough. This is something that, I mean, it's kind of hard to advise because you're not going to get so good that you reach your expectations of how good you should be. It just doesn't work that way. It's kind of like the the uh, tortured artist sort of scenario, your, your work is never really going to be good enough. If it's not good enough now, you're not going to reach a point where you're technically so capable that you're like, yeah, I'm good enough. What actually happens is, and this sounds bad, is your expectations come down. You start to realize that there really is no such thing as a perfect haircut because we're working on an imperfect surface. You know, everybody's head shape is different and, and their textures and densities are different and there's only good enough haircuts that they can please clients and there's good enough haircuts that they can impress barbers and stylists but the idea of like a perfect haircut really doesn't exist unless you're working on an absolutely perfect head. You're going to find some inconsistencies that need to occur in the haircut in order to compensate for inconsistencies in the work in the surface that you're working on. If you're holding this standard that one day you want to do perfect haircuts, you're never going to hit it. It doesn't exist. And if, if your own standard, again, is influenced by your clients, just pay attention. Are your clients happy? Yeah, they're happy. Keep doing it. I mean, in all honesty, if 
let's just say crazy world scenario here. Let's say I took a model in here and I laid his hair between two rocks and I bashed his hair with rocks until the rocks broke his hair off. And then I styled it in a cool way and suddenly that went viral. Now I know fat chance, right? But let's just say something weird or crazy like that happened. Someone cuts hair with an ax and people like it. You could look at that and say that is technically so far from anything perfect or what a good haircut's supposed to be. You're setting your standards based on like what they told you a haircut's supposed to be. But if people are happy with it, if people like it and they're striving for it, then it's way more than good enough to please clients. So there's, there's no level of technical proficiency that's going to get you out of that mindset that you're not doing it right. Um, and in fact, here, here's what you do if you feel like you're not doing it right. You go, okay, I want the hair to do this. And then you cut it and you comb it and you style it. And if the hair does what you wanted it to do, if your, if your actions in doing the haircut met your expectations and what you wanted the haircut to do, even if by some weird standard somewhere the sections are uneven or something or whatever, if it's doing what you want it to do, it's good enough. And, and that's all you need it to be is good enough. And so realize if I want the hair to stand up and I cut it and it stands up, I'm, I did a good enough job. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if it does what you want it to do, it's perfect enough. Like there's no such thing as perfect. There's only good enough. And so the third standard is other barbers and stylists. I see this all over the internet. People point this out and it's just a truth. You know, are other barbers and stylists paying you? And you know, that, that sounds like a rhetorical question that should always be answered no. Like, oh, other barbers and stylists aren't paying me for how good I am at cutting hair. But in, in fact, if you are an educator of sorts, then yes, other barbers and stylists are paying you. So when is it important that the barbers and stylists next to you can comb through your haircut and go, wow, that is absolutely really perfect. It's important if you want them to be your customer. Granted, like they could be a mentor or a guide trying to help you get to that better level of perfect. And I'm not saying with all this, like, oh, good enough is all you need. I'm not saying don't keep striving to be better. Even like, you would be so shocked. If you, if you went through haircuts from some people who are world renowned haircutters, you can find inconsistencies, but it doesn't matter because if it looks good, it looks good. And so trying to please other barbers and stylists and get their approval that your haircuts are good enough. Okay, if you're trying to be an educator, aim to do that. If, if you just want them to be a mentor to help you to be better, realize that better is the goal, perfect is not the goal. And you're always going to find somebody, like if you think I'm good at hair, and you know, I'm not saying anybody should automatically assume that I'm good at hair, but if you, if you believe Andrew's pretty good at hair, I'll tell you this, there are people who will go through my haircuts and tell me they're not good enough. I mean, left and right. There's not a single haircut that I've done that somebody somewhere wouldn't say is imperfect. So you don't, you're not gonna escape that you're not gonna get approval from people who just have a different mindset and different worldview than you, you know? You're not gonna, if so, somebody might think that a good haircut is one that is so technically by the book, but another person might judge a good haircut by, does it look good? I mean, honestly, if, if I was working next to somebody and they said, hey, can you check my haircut? I wouldn't even take a comb to it. I would look at it and I'd go, yeah, that looks really good. Or I'd say, hey, maybe you should like comb this part that way but I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have to touch it to tell them whether I think it's good or not because you could just tell by looking at it. But by the time you have to pick up a comb to double check things, you are like hyper focusing on such minor details that have no bearing on whether the client will like their hair, that have no bearing on whether you should like the hair, but it only has bearing on this like, this over the top ideal of what a haircut should be. By the time you're combing through hair to judge it, you miss the point. So regarding how can I mess up and not feel like a failure, I'll kind of rehash something I already touched on a little bit here, but you will mess up. And even if you're being very careful and very stressed out about doing good work, eventually you will have clients who are unhappy. I still have clients who are unhappy. It's going to happen. But what will happen is you'll have a client that's unhappy and you'll survive. Just like you've had a coworker who says, oh yeah, this isn't quite perfect. You could do this better here. Did you survive that? I think you did. I think you're still cutting hair. People's opinions of your work, obviously it hurts. You want to get approval from other people. You want to get approval from your clients, from yourself, from your coworkers, but eventually you will get this disapproval and you will realize that it means nothing to, at least it should mean nothing to your own opinion of your own haircut. So don't, you know, obviously run in and try to do a bad haircut to just get through the pain of doing a bad haircut. 
But just understand that it's going to happen whether you like it or not. It's, uh, you could be freaking Vidal Sassoon and you could make somebody unhappy with their hair. Because at the end of the day, too, you could be the best country singer in the world. And somebody who doesn't like country is going to go, dang, you suck. So whatever haircuts you're doing, whether they're fades or layers and balayage or any kind of hair you're doing, whether you're the best at it or you're fresh out of school, somebody's going to think it sucks. But also, somebody else is going to think it's great. So you can't be afraid of these opinions because honestly, they're not worth all that much. So I probably could have done with a little bit of a script or bullet points there. I know that I kind of, I know that I kind of rambled a lot, but hopefully you got something out of it. Pay attention to who your haircuts aren't good enough for. Pay attention to how important that is to you that it's good enough to this person or this person. And then realize that as you get better, you're also going to learn to forgive yourself for little mistakes. And as you make mistakes and people point them out, you're, it's going to mean less and less to you because you're gonna develop your own confidence in, in what, that, what you know is good for the right people. Thanks for watching, I hope it's been helpful.